Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Sauber Lab and today will be another video about backup. In this video, we're gonna show how you can use Clonezilla to backup your system. This Clonezilla can be used to backup Windows, Linux and any kind of open system that you want or any OS that you want to backup. Different from the previous video, we're not gonna show how you can do this backup local. It means that you don't need to have an external hard drive or extra hard drive in your computer. In this case, you need to have a NAS or any kind of network attachment. And with this Clonezilla, you can use SMB to backup what we're gonna show in this video. But with the same procedure, you can use FTP to backup external in other computer or web dev as well. So in this knowledge, you can apply exactly the same principles, but using a different IP address or different system. If you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe to the channel and let's understand a little bit more about it. Before we start to explain how you can configure Cloudzilla, we're going to basic. First, you need to download this Cloudzilla. And to download this Cloudzilla, we go in the website for Cloudzilla and try to explain what this Cloudzilla can do. This Cloudzilla, it's a software for disk imaging and cloning. So as the name say, they will do image for your hard drives or clone it. And in this image, you don't need necessarily to have an image only for a US. You can have a image for any system that you want or anything that you want. So it's the good thing. And that uh, you can come here and you can see what uh, the process or uh, the architecture that will work. Unfortunately, this system will not work with ARM system, but uh, most of uh, the servers or most of the system that you're gonna run is not ARM. Only option that you can use ARM it's when you have a Raspberry Pi, but Raspberry Pi, you can remove the hard drive that you do the boot, or you can remove the USB and that uh, backup it. So in this way, most of the options, they will be covered and they will work. So first thing, we need to download this image. And if you come here to download, you have these options where have different formats or different architectures of image that you can download. In my case, I suggest you to download this table because it's stable and gonna work and you know that has been tested for it. If you download the alternative testing or testing, this one could have new features, but those new features could not work in the way that they expect. So easy way, only use the stable option that you know that will work. So we come here for this table and appear this page. Unless you're using a really, really old computer, Normally, the AMD64 will work well. Also, I suggest you to download as a zip. This one, because it's really easy you to save it and to backup and to make images. Why am I telling it? If you download as a zip and you want to flash it in a computer or in USB flash drive. So if you download as a zip and you want only to flash it in your USB stick, you can come here in Balena Edge, select the image, select the drive and flash it. And that will be ready, good to go. But if you download as a zip, you need to form, clean your USB. You need to copy this data and hope that everything is gonna work. Compare for iOS, you know that everything gonna work. Other thing, repository, you can ask out, doesn't matter, and put to download. Once that you finish the load, you need to flash it and that you can start to configure it. In order to do this configuration, at least to show you guys how to do it, we're gonna use a virtual machine, but don't need to use a virtual machine to backup it because you can only clone a virtual machine. But only to be easy, we're gonna use a virtual machine. So in my case, I have my virtual machine here, work with Windows, and that this virtual machine that we're gonna backup it. In this case, this virtual machine is clean, don't have anything installed, and we're gonna want to backup in this stage because if I install anything wrong, I can only recover it. Not only to recover, I can recover all the data that was there and continue on. So I'll come here and I will stop my system and turn off. Things that I need to have in consideration in my machine, I will show in my virtual machine, but uh, you need to have in your physical computer. So if I come here in configuration, first thing that we need to have, it's our USB stick connect to our computer. If you record as a CD, please, use your CD in your computer and that you need to have this physical in your computer. Also, because we're gonna do only a backup in a network, 
you don't need to have any extra hard drive or any extra external hard drive connected for this computer so we're not gonna simulate it in the part of network you need to have a connection for your NAS in the same network or if you use external system you need to have uh, access for internet some way that they will connect in my case I put bridge because they will bridge my virtual machine to my Synology NAS and that I can use it so in this way I will close it and I will start my machine when I start my machine I need to go for BIOS and boot and start with my CD if you don't know how to do it in your specific machine please look online and you're gonna find more information about it in my case the one that we need to run is this Cloudzilla Live VJ 800 by 600 and that I suggest you should do the same because only save time and you don't need to copy anything in your RAM memory once that appeared this page it means that now we can start to configure everything so now we're gonna put start clonezilla and we define what kind of backup what kind of uh, steps that we want to do you have a few ways to do or a few modes first one will be device to image this device to image it means that you will have a physical device and that it will create an image can be a part image or a partition image if you have uh, a device to device it means that it will make a clone straight away you have one device another device they will clone this data if you have a remote source it means that we'll have something remote that will backup and will save in a different source or remote to the destination you select what you want to copy as remote and save as destination in our case we'll put device to image Different from last video, we're not gonna select the local death, we're gonna select SMB. But you still have SSH server, you have NFS server, you have web dev, and uh, you have S3 server. In my case, I will put the SMB because I have a NAS running with SMB, so it's much easier for me. But any other option is valid for you, so we're gonna put SMB. Remember, this procedure that we are doing for SMB will be exactly the same for SSH, the same for web dev, the same one for S3. It's only a little bit configuration on users different, but the procedure will be exactly the same. First thing, you need to define what your uh, connection or what's the setup for your card. If you need a static IP, you can come here for static IP, but my case doesn't matter for me, so we leave my holder to define my IP address for the machine so we'll put DHCP now what are they gonna ask what's the IP address or where it's your Samba connected I could put the name of my NAS or I could put the IP address for my NAS in my case I will put the IP address for my NAS and it's 192.168.1.251 and I'll put enter if I have any domain is the time to put but in my case I don't have so we'll put enter and now it's the user in my case I create a user for FTP Sauber to be able to do this kind of activities and put enter. Now we'll define the path for it. In my case, I create a path called home slash image. You look your path. If you're using open image file, you need to look what you save as a name. If you use as the same, but in my case will be home image and put enter. They will give a few options of uh, SMB protocol I will leave as automatic because I'm not sure which configuration that is so it's totally fine to put automatically and that they will define for me and I will put out my system is not a little bit old so for me I don't need to do the second option I can put the out for me and now they will ask for me to define my password so now I will put my password exactly the same password for the user and on make login if you did everything correctly you're gonna have this option that they will say what's the name of the source the format how much space that you have how much free space that you have and the home partition that they will define so we'll put enter and that they will look if you have any information that folder and that uh, they will give more options for you now they will allow you to define what mo run modes that you want in my case it will begin because I don't have any reason to modify anything if you have any specific reason go to expert but normally beginning will make most of your needs so I will put beginning and I will define what kind of backup that I want I can make as a save as a disk or save as a part save as a part will be only one partition for my hard drive and if I put save as a disk they will make a backup for whole my disk if you want only to backup look like C or D you can go for partition 
but in my case, I want to backup all my system with the same formatation, everything. So I'll put save as a disk. And now they will ask, what's the name of image that you want to use? In my case, it will be exactly the same. I don't need to modify and put enter. Now they're reading all the information for your hard drive. And they will say, you have only one hard drive with this partition. You want it to backup this? I say, yes, I want to backup this. If perhaps don't appear exactly hard drive that you would like, check if it's connect or check if you don't have anything, they should appear. So now they will give the option for you backup it. Now they will give the option for compression. For me, the standard compression is totally fine. You could reduce the size, but it will process a little bit more. In my case, the standard will be totally fine. I will put enter. Now they ask if you want to check before you start to backup. What I suggest you that you really check it before you backup, but in my case, I will not do it only to save time. But if you do this one, they will check all the data, will guarantee that nothing's corrupt or nothing's break before they do the backup. This one, because in the future you can have any problem and to avoid it, you already check it. So we'll put check. Other thing, what I suggest is to check the image after you save it. Why? Because if you don't check, maybe some data was not properly done and once that you try to restore this backup, maybe will not work the way that you expect. So please check it. And now the encryption. If you're using SSH or S3 or anything that sits external for your house, please use an encryption. But remember, keep your password safe because once that you lose your password, all your data is gone. You're not going to be able to find your encryption key and they will not be able to recover without this encryption key. So be careful once that you define encryption. So now we can not define a password because I'm using local network so it will be safe in my case. And here they will give what option of backup that you want. If once it appear here, they will start to do it. So I can define that they will restart. I can define that to shut down or I can define later. So we'll put to define later and they will give this information. You are correctly with this directory. I say yes. They read everything and they will give the formatation for my system. So after a few minutes, they read and now they will give the format and they say, you are sure that you want to back up this information? I say, yes, I want it. Now they start to read my, my system. They will start to read my different partitions and now the backup starts to be done. So if I go back here, my SMB, I read a period this image and here they start to copy the data. So I have partition one, two and three and those partitions that they are doing backup. So now they are the last partition, partition three, and this partition they are running at three gigabytes per minute. And that's uh, because I have uh, 16, 17 minutes. So it will take around five, six minutes according from the information. So let's wait. Once this one finish, then we can go for the next step. So let's wait. Once the backup and the check has been completed, you're gonna have this information that everything has been done completely. So we put enter. And now there will appear this option. At this stage, you can reboot it and restart all the system. But in our case, we're gonna show how you can recover the data. So let's put it to start over. And now it's the first page that you have for the Clonezilla. So let's do here. We're going to do exactly the same step, disk to image. We're going to use SMB the same way that was before. In this case, because I didn't reboot, you don't need to set up the type of interface that you connect to the network, but we need to define the IP address for our machine. So it will be 251. Same way, no domain. Our user, so it will be FTP. Sauber. The location of the image will be slash home images and the type of SMB that we're going to use will be exactly the same auto and we'll put out again and they say you need to put your password for this user. I'll put my password. Now they'll show exactly the same information for my network attachment. I'll put enter and that we're going to put as a beginning. In this case, because they read find an image there that potentially they can use as a backup, they will have this information here. 
So in this case, I can hey store my data. To hey store my data, we'll put hey store. And that they will ask what image that I want. I'll put enter. They will ask what hard drive that I want to store. I will put enter. They will ask if I want to choose uh, the same partition or I want to extend the size. Suppose that the initial hard drive was 60 gigabytes and the next one that you're gonna pick up it, it's 120. So you can use this great partition proportion that they will extend the amount of the partition in order to have uh, more use of your hard drive. Otherwise, the last, um, I don't know, 67 gigabytes you're not gonna use if you extend your hard drive. So let's put use partition. Want to check before I start? Yes, I want to check before I start. And then if I put here, they will select what kind of backup that I want. So in this way, once that I press here, they will start to look for my data, we will check all the image and we start to recover my data. So you don't need to do consecutive for this, but if you keep that image safe in a place in your hard drive, this will guarantee that if I have any problem, you still be able to recover your data and you still be able to use it. So I hope that you guys like this video. If you like this video, please don't forget to leave a like, consider to subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and see you next time. Bye.